Hello students. Good morning to everyone. Uh, today we are going to see the classification of mental disorder which comes under unit 2 that is the principle and concept of mental health nursing. End of the class we will be knowing what is the classification of mental disorder and it will be easy for you to manage the clients at psychiatric and the clinical settings. The specific objective of the classes are we are going to see the definition of classification, going to discuss about the what is the, what all the classification of mental disorders and I will be elaborating the ICD-10 classification of mental disorder. Also, we will enumerate the DSM-4 and 5 classification of mental disorder. Uh, at last, we will be seeing the list of Indian classification of mental disorder in this class. So, the uh, uh, first starting with the classes, we are going to see what is classification. So, it is a process by which a complexity of phenomena is reduced by arranging them into categories according to some established criteria. This classification will help us when we give care for the patients, we will be able to know what type of care to be given for based on the categories of the mental illness. So the subheading and subcontent of the classification of mental disorder is ICD-10 classification and DSM classification, Indian classification. We will see one by one. The classification of mental disorder, again, uh, we may call it as psychiatric nosology or psychiatric taxonomy. It represents a key aspect of psychiatry and other mental health professions and is, is an important issue for men, people who may be diagnosed. This classification of mental disorder may be grouped under ICD-10 classifications or DSM classification or Indian classification as I mentioned earlier. First, we will see in detail about ICD-10 classification. So, what do you mean by ICD-10? It is an international classification of diseases. At present, we have a 10th revision. So, the international coding guidelines for health problems and procedures, it has been given by ICD-10. So, it was released by World Health Organization in 1992, replacing the ICD-9. It was introduced with the help of alphanumeric categorizations. So, with regarding mental illness, the classification start with the F ranges, that is F002, F99. We will see one by one, F00 to F09, the first classification comes under organic including the symptomatic and the mental disorders. It include F00 to F09, which is uh, listed here as dementia in Alzheimer's disease, vascular dementia, Delirium not induced by alcohol and other psychoactive substances and F06 is other mental disorder due to brain damage and dysfunction and to physical disease. And F07 is personality and behavioral disorder due to brain disease, a damage and dysfunction. The last one in the first classification is 09 that is unspecified organic and symptomatic mental disorder. Next moving to the second classification of F10 to F19 that is mental and behavioral disorder due to psychoactive substance use. So, F10 mental and behavioral disorder due to use of alcohol and F11 is due to use of opioids and F12 is due to the use of cannabinoids and F13 is use of sedatives and hypnotics and F14 is due to the use of cocaine and F15 is the use of other stimulants including caffeine. F16 is use of hallucinogens and last F18 is the use of volatile solvents. Next moving to F20 to 29 as we all are familiar with mental disorder schizophrenia. Here in F20 to 29 schizophrenia, schizotypal and delusional disorder. F20 is schizophrenia and F21 is schizotypal disorder. F22 is persistent delusional disorders and F23 is acute and transient psychotic disorders. F24 is induced delusional disorder. F25 it deals with the schizoaffective disorders. Next moving to F30 to 39 which comes under like mood affective or mood affective disorders. F30 it is a manic episode. F31 is bipolar affective disorder. F32 is depressive episode and F33 is recurrent depressive disorder. F34 is persistent mood or affective disorders. F38 is other mood disorders and last F39 comes under unspecified mood disorder. Next moving to F40 to 49, here specifically it deals with the neurotic conditions, neurotic, stress related and somatoform disorders. F40 is phobic anxiety disorder, 
F41 is other anxiety disorders. F42 is obsessive compulsive disorders. F43 reaction to severe stress and adjustment disorders. F44 dissociative or conversion disorders. And last F45 is the somatoform disorders. With regard to F50 to 59, here it deals with the behavioral syndromes associated with physiological disturbances and physical disorders. So F50 is eating disorders, F51 is non-organic sleep disorders and F52 is sexual dysfunction. Moving to F60 to 69, disorders of adult personality and behavior. So F60 deal with the personality disorders, F63 habit and impulse disorders, F64 gender identity disorders and F65 disorder of sexual preference. Uh, next moving to F70 to 79 mental retardations. So mild here the mental retardation is classified. F70 is mild, F71 is moderate mental retardations, F72 is severe mental retardations and F73 is profound mental retardations. Next moving to F80 to 89 disorder of psychological development. So F80 the disorder of psychological development, specific developmental disorder of speech and language. F81 specific developmental disorder of scholastic skills and F82 specific developmental disorder of motor functions and F84 is a pervasive developmental disorder. Next F90 to F98 a behavioral and emotional disorders with onset usually occurring in childhood and adolescence. F90 is hyperkinetic disorders, F91 is conduct disorders, F93 is emotional disorder with onset specific to childhood. F94 is disorder of social functioning with onset specific to childhood and adolescence. F95 is tick disorders. F99 is unspecified mental disorder. Coming to the last end of F ICD-10 that is with regard to mental disorder F99. It is unspecified mental disorder. So now whatever we have seen, all the classifications, they would have given the detailed description about each signs and symptoms of each conditions. With that, it will be easy for us, the psychiatrist, to diagnose the conditions and based on that signs and symptoms, whatever the patient is having, as being a nurse, we will be able to provide care for the patient. And next, come, moving to the second classification. A diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder that we call it as shortly DSM. So it was produced by the American Psychiatric Association characterized as a mental disorder as a clinically significant behavioral or psychological syndrome or a pattern that occurs in an individual. It is associated with the present distress or disability or with a significant increased risk of suffering. Sometimes there is no definition adequately specifies Precise the boundary for the concept of mental disorder. Some different situations call for the different definitions as per American Psychiatric Association in 1994 and 2000. So the DSM-5 here in 2013 it was updated. Okay, It was the, uh, mainly the uh, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder, the taxonomic and diagnostic tool published by the American Psychiatric Associations. It has moved towards non-axial system of diagnosis. That is, it has a formerly axis 1, 2, 3 with a separate notation for important psychosocial and contextual factors. Formerly axis 4 and disability for it is axis 5. So, there are three sections of DSM-5 or section. First section 1 that is chapter 1 organization, chapter 2 diagnostic criteria and codes, section 3 emerging measures and models. Now, the DSM-5 non-axial diagnostic criteria and codes. The neurodevelopmental disorder, under that you may, uh, you will be seeing uh, intellectual disabilities. That is intellectual developmental disorder and communication disorders, autism spectrum disorder, attention deficit or hyperactive disorder, specific learning disorder also will come under this. And uh, last motor disorder or tic disorder such as TARTS. So all these conditions comes under the neurodevelopmental disorder that is the DSM-5 non-axial diagnostic criteria and codes. Also, following that, we have schizophrenia spectrum and other psychotic disorders, bipolar and related disorders, depressive dis uh, disorders, anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive related disorders, trauma and stress, stress related disorder, dissociative disorder, somatic symptom and related disorders, feeding and eating disorders, and elimination disorder. 
I know like this is very difficulty to keep all these names in your mind. But uh, since it is a first class, we are just listing out all these things. We will have a my, uh, we can have some type of uh, memory to keep all this in your mind. Okay, that we'll see in later. So following that DSM five, there is again following sleep wake disorders and sexual dysfunctions, gender dysphoria and disruptive impulsive control and conduct disorders, substance related and addictive disorders, neurocognitive disorders, personality, and last one is the paraphilic disorder. And apart from all these disorders, there are other mental disorders and medication induced movement disorders and other adverse effect of medications, other conditions that may be a focus of clinical attention. So whatever it is apart from these, that will be given clinical attention by the doctors. Next, DSM-4 codes and diagnostic criteria. DSM-4 TR that is text revision of 2000 consists of five axes. Uh, sometimes we call it as domain also on which disorder can be assessed. They are axis 1, current mental static diagnosis. That is all the mental disorders except personality and the mental retardations which comes under axis 1. And axis 2 is personality disorder and mental retardations. And axis 3 is any physical conditions whether related or not to the psychiatric disorders. And axis 4 is psychosocial or environmental factors contributing to the disorders. Axis 5 is the global assessment of functioning scheme. This is a measure of functioning at a specified time. For example, at the time of evaluations, the highest level of functioning during past six months at the time of discharge. So all these things will come under the axis 5. So now we have completed ICD-10 and DSM-4. Next, moving to the Indian classification of psychiatric disorder. So the Indian classifications it is broadly divided into three. Psychosis, Neurosis and Special Psychiatric Disorder. So, as we all know, the psychosis, again, it is divided into functional psychosis and schizophrenia, the schizophrenia types will come under this. simple, hemiphrenic, catatonic, paranoid, all these things comes under the schizophrenia and uh, affective disorder which include mania and depressions and organic uh, psychosis which includes acute psychosis or chronic psychosis. And moving to neurosis, there are anxiety neurosis, depressive neurosis and hysterical neurosis, obsessive compulsive neurosis and phobic neurosis. So, the, as per the Indian classifications, broadly divided into psychosis, neurosis and third one is the special disorder. The special disorders are divided into childhood disorders, personality disorders, substance abuse, psychophysiological disorder and mental retardations. Okay. So, these are all the uh, classification of mental disorders, ICD-10, DSM-4 and Indian classifications. So, there is a difference between ICD-10 and DSM-5. So, we will see what is the difference between ICD-10 and DSM-5. ICD-10, it is not used in USA, but it is used in other countries. Whereas, DSM-4, it is used in United States of America. Whereas, ICD-10 refers to the international classification of diseases and related health problems. Whereas, DSM refers to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Next, ICD-10 was developed by the World Health Organizations but DSM was developed by the American Psychiatric Associations. So, the ICD-10 refers to the classification begin its 10th revision. Okay. But here in DSM Diagnosis Statistics, it is the 5th refers to the manual being in the 5th edition disease. And ICD-10 has no axial format as we have seen F00 and F99. Whereas here in DSM-4 tier texting, it is in 5 axis format. DSM-5 has no axis format at all. So, this is the difference between ICD-10 and DSM-5. Okay. So, to conclude, uh, I hope so there are few more uh, differences are there. ICD-10 contains codes for all the type of diseases and disorders whereas DSM-4 covers the mental disorders only. Okay. And ICD-10 codes have an alphabetic prefix followed for numbers. For example, here ICD-10 uh, code for paranoid schizophrenia means F20.0. Whereas DSM codes as a numerical only example, the code for attention deficit hyperactivity is 314, that is 314.01. So it is available in all widely spoken languages, this ICD-10. Whereas DSM-4 is available only in English version. In ICD-10, we do not include social consequences of disorder. Whereas in DSM-4, it includes occupational and other areas of functioning also. So this is the difference between ICD-10 and the DSM-4. 
I hope these classes would help you to know what all the classifications of mental disorders are available and what is a detailed description about each classification ICD-10 and DSM-4 and the Indian classifications. Whatever we read but in India we mainly follow the many institutions follow ICD-10 but many of the psychiatrists follow the Indian classification also to make it in an easy diagnosis. Thank you all.